we're in this mess because society's lost sight of what's most important. What matters most to me is my faith and my family. And I know I'm not the only one who believes that way. So we're joining together as God-fearing people to take the light into the darkness. I hope you're not hungry today. You know, here at Final Descent Outdoors, I think I say this all the time, but we got a great group of staff guys. Nobody's looking to get famous or be some celebrity, just good Christian guys enjoying hunting and enjoying the outdoors and loving the Lord. And one of those guys is Stafford Daniel Arms. This, so this is where I grew up. Hunting's always been a part of my life. We'd have you know, a house full of people during deer season. We'd always have six or eight guys here to hunt. It was nothing to have go out opening morning rifle season and have four or five deer hanging in the tree in the yard. And, uh, my wife's not a big hunter. She doesn't have the patience for hunting. So I didn't come from a big hunting, fishing kind of family. When Daniel and I got together, I didn't really realize how big all this was um, to him and his family. Uh, matter of fact, the first time he had me come out here, I was um, a little scared. I thought, I'm like in deliverance. Um, <laughs> The dad built the, the log cabin in the, about 1983, and he was a super avid fisherman. Fishing was his passion. The day of my dad and, and mom's wedding, he was actually on the river striper fishing uh, with the best man and a couple of the groomsmen. They show up to the church in their fishing clothes straight from the river with fish in the truck waiting to clean. They went and had the wedding smelling like fish. The real, the real true man that my dad was while uh, it was fishing season. The sand bass were running in the creek, so they had the house about half completed, and you can see all the guys out here holding stringers full of sand bass out of the creek because everyone knows when the fish are biting, the fishermen have to go catch them because they're not going to wait, even if you're building a house. I would even venture to say that I didn't enjoy fishing at all until we catch, really. <laughs> I'm a catcher, not a fisher. Once we started doing it with our kids, and you know, it just made me really want to do that more often and support him in that venture because with his job I really wanted him to have an outlet because sometimes his work can get very stressful and heavy. So this was super awesome to do as a family. So I got on the patrol in 2006 and I've been a trooper now for, for 12 years. Um, after about two years on the patrol my wife and I moved back to this house but it was a two bedroom, one bathroom house. So we had to do a big add on and, and try to make this our home and a place to raise our family and, and teach them skills that they can have for the rest of their life. You know, hunting has always been a way of life for Daniel. And even though we lived in the same small town for nearly 10 years, we didn't actually know one another, but God had plans to make sure our paths crossed. I'd always thought about filming hunts. I'd always, was always intrigued. I watch a lot of outdoor TV. You know, I always thought in the back of my mind, some of these guys, I could do, I could do that stuff. One year they had this, this really old, really crazy, non-typical buck. Weston saw this trail camera pictures and some video footage I had while I was bow hunting of that deer. And he said, Dad, I'm gonna kill that deer. I'm gonna kill that deer. Uh, opening morning the rifle season, I got Weston up early and took him out and had the camera all set up and everything. 7.30 that morning, just right as the sun was coming up, that buck walks out at, at about 20 yards and, and Weston harvested that deer. So I posted it on YouTube. Somehow Brad came across that, that YouTube video and called and said, hey, I'd love to use this on our youth episode. I was pumped. I mean, I really, you know, it was, Outdoor television was something I'd always dreamed of as a kid. Built a friendship from there and I basically just kept nagging at Brad and calling and saying, hey, if you need anybody to film five years later, six years later, you know, on staff now, I guess here we are. You know, after getting a chance to visit and meet Daniel and his wife, DJ, and seeing their passion, not only for the Lord, but also for the outdoors and how much he enjoyed filming his hunts, it was an easy decision to add him to the Final Descent team. This segment has been brought to you by Vortex. The Force in Optics.
Learn more at vortexoptics.com. And by these fine sponsors. This segment's brought to you by Rambo Bikes. Rambo, taking you places you've never been. Learn more at rambobikes.com. And by these fine sponsors. Daniel's always had a desire to feed his family through hunting, but also through growing a garden and raising animals on a farm. And because of his hunting and filming for us, he developed a skill of being able to go out and create video content. And he decided to start a YouTube channel to document his family's lifestyle of homesteading. So it's called Arms Family Homestead. We were just doing the homestead type thing, showing how to grow your own food and that kind of stuff. But I really wanted it to be centered on the family aspect of that. Dude, you know, a lot of my, my friends really couldn't understand. You're, you're in law enforcement. Most guys in law enforcement are super private. They don't, they don't like people seeing, they don't want people peeking into that window of their private life. He'd be videoing himself and I'm like, oh my God, this is so weird, you know. We all made fun of him. I was one of the first ones. But it's been such a blessing and just knowing that other people are watching us and love to see our family. It's just a blessing. God works in mysterious ways every day that we don't even realize. We use this as a tool to show what our family's about. In our country today, that, that family bond has kind of been broken. I want to show on our YouTube channel that that, that American family is still here and we hope we can kind of inspire families just to get together and build that family relationship back up. I love that, that we do what we do and that he's brought us to this. So what's up guys, this is Daniel in Houston from Arms Family Homestead and today this is what our channel is about and we're doing some stuff. <laughs> YouTubing with a five year old. So as Houston said, I'm Daniel and this is Arms Family Homestead and this is what our channel is all about. So we have a large garden out here, but we also have this 24 by 48 foot high tunnel. We can grow summer crops in here, but we can also grow throughout the winter. We can grow our greens and things through the colder months inside here under plastic. So we run a herd of meat goats on our property. They're Kiko and Kiko Cross. The Kiko goats are excellent for keeping the trees trimmed up. They keep the weeds eat down a little bit. They really help with that overall property management. We keep a flock of laying hens here on our property because we believe farm fresh eggs are far superior to store-bought eggs. So hunting has always been a tradition in my family. I believe it's important to teach my kids at a young age that they can go out and harvest wild game and provide food for their family. Fishing is one of our favorite family activities. We spend a lot of time in the Gulf of Mexico, at the lake, and down here on the creek at our favorite little fishing hole. We love catching cook videos because cooking those fish that we catch is one of our favorite things in the world. That's what we're all about here at Arms Family Homestead. We'd love for you to subscribe, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and as Houston always says, And we'll see you on the next video. I really didn't expect it to kind of take off the way it has. Uh, we're, we're averaging between three to 350,000 views a month, 10, 11,000 views a day, which is just amazing. We're, we're up to about 20, almost 26,000 subscribers right now. It's turned into something that's, that's a lot of fun. It started off as a hobby and I really, really enjoy it. We're getting a lot of amazing people, leave so many good comments that, that say we've, we've inspired their family to get out and go fishing together or get out and, and grow a garden together. And that's just kind of what, what drives our family to keep sharing what's essentially our private life with the world because I think the world you know, needs to see that. This segment's brought to you by Hunter's Cloak, a complete electronic mist system for complete concealment and attraction. Learn more at Hunter'sCloak.com. And by these fine sponsors. This segment's brought to you by All Seasons Feeders and Blinds. Family owned and operated, making products to help you enjoy the outdoors. Learn more at AllSeasonsFeeders.com. And by Automatic Manhood the six-week video-based Bible study series from Final Descent Outdoors. 
Order yours at finaldescentoutdoors.com. And by these fine sponsors. You know, for Daniel, he loves to hunt himself, but being a father means he's taking his kids all the time, which honestly is way better than hunting for yourself anyways. Well, today is the first day of the youth rifle season here in Oklahoma. It's October 20th and it's about 80 degrees. I mean, this little guy is hunting in shorts. It is not cold out here, is it? We're gonna try to get her on a buck this evening. Think you can kill one? Yeah. Yeah. It is hot. It's probably 80 degrees out there, but in here it feels like, I don't know, 120? It is hot. Well, day one wasn't super successful. Uh, we took Houston with us last night and we saw a few does, seven or eight does. Just never saw a buck, so we're uh, so we got today and tomorrow, and hopefully we can get Emily on a buck this morning. Yeah. She's up bright and early. You ready? Yeah. Well, let's go do it. Emily, you dropped him. You just freaking drilled that deer. Oh my gosh, he dropped like a hammer. Did you hear that? <laughs> you shot and he said, boom, and said, ah. I killed the deer before Nick did. I killed the deer before Nick did. I killed the deer. Emily, you think you can track this buck by yourself? Yeah. 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 All right. See if you can find him. <laughs> He's dead. Hold him up. Nice, Emily. Oh. I haven't seen that deer at all. Ew, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> Well, 2017 youth rifle season is in the books and Emily dropped a big one. I am super proud of you, sis. As soon as this one stepped out, Emily had her heart set on this guy. I love it. This is why you take a kid hunting right here, just that excitement. That little girl, I mean, her eyes lit up and her face was glowing and she was excited. This segment has been brought to you by Cherokee Sports. Solutions for the sportsman. To see their full line of innovative products, visit CherokeeSports.com. This segment has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors. Now it's time for the Real Avid Tech Tip of the Week. Many of the trail cameras that you can buy at the store come with a nylon strap that has a clip in the back that kind of holds it to the tree. And that makes those cameras, those expensive cameras, really easy to steal. The Cam Guardian from Guardian Outdoors replaces that nylon strap with a heavy duty steel band. The steel band is held in place by an aluminum block that's actually locked all together with a security screw that's only specific to Guardian Outdoor products. And if that's not enough for you, they also make the Cam Max, which is essentially the exact same thing as the Cam Guardian, 
except on steroids. The aluminum housing is two and a half times bigger than the original Cam Guardian, and it's locked in with two security screws protecting that investment of those trail cameras. The Cam Guardian Max clearly states to any would-be thief that your trail camera is off limits. And if you're looking for a case to keep your SD cards organized and safe, then you're gonna love those cases from Guardian Outdoors as well. It's made out of heavy duty plastic material, unlike some of those other flimsy ones that are on the market, and it completely locks and is 100% waterproof. And it's kid proof too. And to help you protect those cards from the field back home, it actually has a carry strap that can be attached to your belt loop, your backpack, or even around your wrist. To order any of the products that we've talked about today, or to see the other products made by Guardian Outdoors, Check them out at guardianhunting.com. This segment is brought to you by X-Stand Tree Stands, manufacturing the lightest, most innovative ladder, climbing, and hang-on tree stands in the industry. Learn more at xstand.com. And by these fine sponsors. For the arms family, it's not just about a big rack. They eat everything they kill, and this buck for Emily is definitely no exception. Kind of grew up in the woods, and, and deer hunting was a part of that here. Here on our property, we'd have you know, a house full of people during deer season. We'd always have six or eight guys here to hunt and just kind of a, a tradition thing every year during, during the muzzleloader season and rifle season. We just have a group of guys and it's, it was totally different than it is nowadays. It seems like they would have, you know, the entire family would come over in the evening and we'd have four or five deer hanging in a tree. Everyone would work together processing all the deer. So we may shoot four or five deer opening day and opening night, there may be 15 people here all cutting up deer. And it wasn't about trophies and it wasn't about who can kill the biggest deer. It was about feeding families. You really do value putting that meat in the freezer. I want to get my kids out in the woods and, and, and learn about the animals, learn about, learn about what we're doing and, and teach them to have them that ability to, to feed their children and their family someday to pass that on. to eat what, what we harvest and what we grow and when we butcher a cow and you know it's just the quality and knowing where your food comes from is just, I love that, that part of it. We started growing our own food and I noticed that the kids enjoyed it. They could take a part in it. They loved eating those vegetables that we grew and that got me to thinking there's a difference when you can get out there and compare a homegrown tomato versus a store-bought tomato, the taste, everything, it's just totally different. A lot of people you know, are into deer hunting, they love the deer meat, so they know there's a difference in store-bought meat versus something that, that you produced yourself. It's the same thing for vegetables. There's just a difference in quality and the taste comparison and the nutritional value is just totally different. I love cooking all the food. That's one of my favorites. I do really love to cook, um, and that's good because my husband does not do real well at that. Never know what you're gonna get with him. Eat it overnight. We may cook it tomorrow, Here but it. it'll be included in this. So while I do enjoy my job as a trooper in law enforcement, there's just some things I can't really fulfill inside of me. There's no way to quantify my work. Um, the gardening's a, a stress reliever um, because I could get out there and plant something and at the end of the day say, this is what I've done, this is what I've grown. And he wanted me to be a part in the garden, but I do not. <laughs> I do not do the garden thing. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, I didn't like it at first because it took up so much of his time. I didn't realize how important that really was to him. You know, I don't want us just to be married. I want us to have this wonderful relationship for years, even when our kids are gone. I want us to have these things that we love to do together and to be a part of what each other enjoy doing. He needs my support because of the job that he does. He needs me to be that for him. But I think our kids need to see that. You know, they need to see that we're each other's priority before they're our priority. You know, I'm, I'm his person and he's my person and I, I think that's how it should be. The, voice of Jesus say, the commitment to family by Daniel and DJ is really inspiring, especially in the busy hustle and bustle of the crazy world we live in today. Daniel and DJ have made it all work because they've made Christ the foundation of their relationship. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 says, Therefore everyone who hears these words and puts them into practice is like a man who builds his house on a solid rock. It goes on to say that the rain comes down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house 
yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. Verse 27 says that when the rains came down and the waters rose and everything crashed against the house, it crumbled because it wasn't built on the rock as its foundation. Today, is Christ your foundation? Is your life built on the rock? Is your marriage, your relationship with your, your friends, is it built on the rock that is Jesus? If not, I want you to know that it's not too late to shift your foundation from sinking sand to the rock of ages. If we can help you get back on track with the Lord, to begin a relationship with Him, to, to center your relationship with your spouse uh, on the rock, anything we can do to help you grow closer to God and make Him your foundation. We want to help you do that. Go to our website, send us an email, go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, send us a message there. Let us know how we can be encouraging you to become all you can be through the Lord and making Him your solid rock. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Bailey's Outdoor Shop is the official taxidermist of Final Descent Outdoors. Closed captioning brought to you by Real Avid.